Good day to you. My name is Maria Kondzielska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. And today we take you for a trip to the highest mountain in the world. With us is Oswald Rodrigo Pereira, a filmmaker, but also a reporter. Thank you very much for being with us. Hello, good morning. Oswald, and you were one of the few Poles who took part in this extreme attempt to summit K2 mountains this winter. And you joined Magdalena Goszkowska in her attempt to do it. Tell me please a little bit more about this plan. Well, as you said, I was one of the three Poles that took part in this expedition. Uh, Magdalena Goszkowska contacted me in November last year and she proposed me to join her uh, in her attempt to make K2 in winter as first Polish uh, person, as first woman. And of course, I didn't think much about it. I accepted her proposition and I went there as a filmmaker. Uh, of course, I had some experience before because it was my fifth expedition. Uh, I went uh, also to K2 winter expedition in 2018 uh, and then I joined the Polish winter Himalayan program for a year and a half and I went to three expeditions as a filmmaker and a little bit like manager of uh, winter uh, of mountain expeditions. So I had some experience but as you probably know and if not I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. K2 in winter is like a very specific specific mountain, a very risky mountain, a very tough challenge, so I needed to focus 100% uh, on this um, target. And uh, basically since November I had around uh, six weeks and I focused my training completely on this expedition because uh, as you can imagine the best shots uh, when I go to the mountain are taken from up, so usually I have to be in the front of the climbers to take the best shots of the mountains and of the climbers themselves. So usually I have to be as strong as they are and sometimes even stronger. So yeah, I focused mainly on this. I was uh, preparing uh, training on stairs with heavy loading on heavy shoes, boots on my, on my feet and also sleeping on a high altitude um, hypoxic tent. So basically I can say that from a, a guy from Warsaw, a reporter, I had to prepare myself to be an extreme uh, filmmaker in, in K2 in winter, which until this year wasn't climbed any time. Exactly, it sounds very challenging, but they're so fascinating, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the details, the necessary parts of this climb. So, because you land in Skardu, and what happens later? Exactly. As you can imagine, during uh, COVID times, it's, it's, I mean, it's risky, but also you need to follow a couple of procedures to travel to the other part of the world, which is Pakistan. So first we, we went to Islamabad, then from Islamabad we joined the, um, some of the members, because it was an international expedition, and we flew to Skardu. In Skardu we needed to wait a couple of days so that every member of the expedition is there on time, because they come from different parts of the world, from Chile, United States, Slovenia, Germany, etc. So we gathered all of us and then we formed um, a caravan and on 24 uh, of December we, we left Skardu and the first stage is made uh, in, in cars, in jeeps. Uh, the road itself is a challenge but it's quite safe. So we, we traveled around um, eight hours, 130 kilometers or 115, our first destination. And from there, you walk, you made a, make a trekking, uh, which takes, which is around 90 kilometers. And it took us five days and you gain altitude. Of course, you have um, a climatization rule, so you cannot make more than 300 meters of difference every day when you uh, walk on this trekking and after five days on day on day 29 of December we arrived to K2 base camp at 5000 meters above sea level altitude. And that's when the challenge start I would say because uh, that's where, where the climbs begin and what are the temperatures there? What's the, uh, what's the situation in the base, in the camp base? 
Well, in the base camp, I think uh, we could say an average temperature was around minus 22, minus 25. Of course, sometimes you have sun during the day and then it's pretty warm. You can walk around in a thin layer on yourself. You can even take a shower in a special tent. But mainly it's uh, minus 20, minus 25. And everything depends on the wind because if the wind is strong, the chill temperature goes really low. But I think in base camp, it wasn't any time lower than minus 30 degrees. And as we know, um, K2 has not been submitted before in winter. And what made this time uh, and this, this particular year made it so possible, first of all, and why so many people wanted to do it? Was it because of weather? Was it because of, I don't know, other climate situation? I think K2 is uh, somehow a mythical mountain. And if you can compare it, reaching K2, the summit of K2 in winter, maybe you could compare it to landing on the moon. So as you can imagine, all over the world, there are a lot of explorers, climbers, and just athletes. And it was like one of the things that wasn't done by a um, by human uh, until this winter. So it was challenging a lot of people, uh, but we can say that uh, climbing 8,000 years in winter was invented by Poles because during the era of communism, we couldn't travel abroad. So we, when we finally made it and, and we could travel abroad, all the 8,000 years were submitted. So uh, Andrzej Zavada came with the idea, okay, well, let's climb those 8,000 years in winter. And out of 14 8,000 years, 10 were submitted on f by first time by Poles or in a team where Poles were members. So just three mountains, weren't climbed by Poles as first uh, in winter, and K2 was the last one. And of course, for me, so as a, as a Pole, it was important to be there, uh, to, to see this. Uh, I, I just had a feeling and intuition that this expedition this year would be historical, because I knew that there were a lot of strong climbers going there, but especially I knew that there was a super strong team of Sherpas, of Nepali climbers, and the chances that it would be submitted this year were pretty big. And as you can imagine, uh, I used also to work as a re reporter, as a TV journalist. Like following the news, especially if you can reach them from first hand, be there, witness them, it's super important in a journalist mission. And I just felt that if I go there and they submit it, it's a story that will go to the books and movies probably in the future. So, yeah, first of all, I thought I want to be there. Second, the part of the question is, why was it possible to climb um, to summit K2 this winter? I think especially um, because finally the, the Sherpas, the Nepali climbers, they decided to, to go there. They had a mission. They just want to do this. They didn't want to try. They wanted to summit. They are very strong and usually they follow commercial clients. They helped them during their attempt to summit 8,000 years, but they are always in the shadows. Somehow people forget about them and they do usually the, the dirty job, the hard work. So this time we can say they had the flashes on them and they thought, okay, K2 is the last one, not time in winter, let's do it. And But also we have to admit that they had um, a very good um, window, weather window, because on K2 usually, on the top, you have winds that reach up to 2,200 kilometers per hour. And of course, for a human being, it's impossible to stay under these conditions. So usually on the sun, you, you can go only with uh, wind up to 35 kilometers per hour, and it gives a chill temperature of around 65 minus degrees Celsius. So they had a pretty long weather window, and I think this combined with their power, and their target, it, it made it possible. Yes, and we will talk a little bit more about it in the next episode. So please, you, the viewers of Poland Daily, stay with us. <laughs>